Hello, my name is Maddie and I just finished the second year of my PhD and I have been a college or university student then for an entire six years and I've only ever been a student in my life. So I think I have some pretty good authority when I say these are some things that'll make your life as a student so much nicer, so much better. Things that I think you need as well as some tips uh, maybe a little bit more focused towards grad students, but generally students as well, um, especially since things are becoming a lot more electronic. So I'm going to go about the things that I think you need and then carry on. So as a student nowadays, absolutely 1000%. What do you need? A laptop. This is my laptop. It is a Lenovo ThinkPad X1. I guess this is what it looks like. It's quite thin and light compared to my old laptop. Here she is. My old laptop was absolutely massive. It was an Asus and I did love it, especially because it had a full number pad on the keyboard here. This one does not. However, it's infinitely lighter. Like it's so much lighter. It's probably half the weight and it takes up a, a, a lot less space on my desk. So I do quite like this one. I did really like my other one, but I definitely recommend nowadays um, a laptop with a touch screen if you can, just because then you can get one of those pens and write on it if you want. I do like it quite a lot for like annotating PDFs um, with notes and stuff. Um, I personally never had a tablet, but I know that's something that is also very common nowadays with students. I'm still an old school pen and paper note taker. I'm still an old school print out an article and highlight it when possible. But when you're working with all these online textbooks that exist now, it's just not feasible to be printing a lot of things out. But when it's a touchscreen laptop, you can still annotate and take notes a lot easier than when it is not. If you're a little bit more into the like electronic notes, maybe get some sort of tablet. Some professors, if you are using your laptop in class, will request that you sit towards the back of the class because it's very well known and researched that students who use their laptops in class actually distract everyone around them, including themselves more. So I personally prefer and suggest writing notes on pen and paper, old school style. Um, you're also then forced to get good at taking notes and you're not just going to fall into the trap of writing like a record and just basically transcribing exactly everything that's said into your notes. You're forced to write down what's actually important and learn how to take good notes. So my pro tip is to do paper notes, but that's all up to you, I suppose. Um, but on the note of the laptop, obviously with a laptop, you will need a laptop charger. I currently only have one and I've been thinking a lot about getting a second one because I have a desk that I work at. I'm assigned a grad student desk and there are times that I leave my laptop charger at my desk and I bring my laptop home to work on personal things like video editing and stuff. And I realized that I have less left my phone charger at work, like I said. And so I think it would be awesome and definitely something I'm considering probably should do and just not keep putting it off is buying a second phone or laptop charger. So I have one at work and at home and then I don't have to shuttle it back and forth as much. So I should really get on that. Really get on that. On the note of chargers, I actually just had to plug in one of my um, portable charger backup battery things into the camera, which was dying. So here is another one that I have, a power bank. Um, definitely just good to have and keep charged and on hand because sometimes classrooms have a lot less plugins than you think that they do. And then also now they're making laptops with fewer and fewer USB plugins if you even have an actual USB plugin and not just micro USBs. So I think these, are so handy. So definitely just have one, try to keep it charged. Um, another note about the laptop thing, if you have a laptop and, or if you're buying a laptop and you have the option, I'd recommend getting a laptop with an HDMI plugin. Um, and if you don't have an HDMI plugin on your laptop, you definitely wanna get some sort of converter that converts to like 
micro USB to HDMI or however those work because whenever you're doing a presentation at school, a lot of the like computer lecture stand things or any of the TVs or something have HDMI cords to plug into your laptop. And if you don't have one, then you can't like really connect your laptop super easily. So definitely at least have an HDMI port on your laptop or a converter. And that will make your life so much easier when it comes time to giving presentations. Like a lot of times when I'm in groups, I'm the only one that has the HDMI port. So then my laptop becomes the one that we plug in um so it'll just make your life a little bit easier one no i still have so many more technology things another technology thing that i should have talked about with the laptop is a wireless mouse and a mouse pad some people don't um, get the mouse pad to go with the mouse but i just think it's so much easier and nicer like i hate that feeling of whenever you were at a computer and like middle school or high school and they didn't have mouse pads because people would like steal them or rip them or whatever so you just had to use the table oh to me it's like nails on a chalkboard or when you're writing on a piece of paper and it's only a single sheet of paper and you're writing in pen ugh, i need at least like it needs to be like two to three sheets thick if i'm going to be writing in pen let me know down below if you're the same way but I also have a mouse pad. I got this one for maybe like five bucks at Target or so when I got my initial mouse. The first mouse that I had was a Logitech wireless mouse and you just plug it into one of the USBs on your laptop. Um, that one actually recently crapped out on me, but it lasted five and a half years, six years, five and three quarter years. So it lasted a really long time. Um, and then I ended up getting this one, which is the same one that my dad has used. Wow, it's really not gonna focus. The same one my dad has used for work for a long time. And I like it because it does pack down really thin. And the way that it works is you pop it into pop it into sport mode kind of like your crocs that's kind of what it feels like but you just bend it like this and then you have your mouse like this works really nice um and then it has like this the scroll kind of feature thing and everything and it just takes up a lot less room they are usually um battery powered so this one's two triple a batteries but this makes it so much easier i hate using a trackpad for like with my entire being i hate trackpads um, especially I work a lot in Excel when it comes to like my data analysis and nothing worse than working in Excel and like editing graphs and in PowerPoint. PowerPoint is the worst on a trackpad, especially when you're making like big research posters and you're moving around a lot of things. Just get a mouse. It'll make your life so much easier. Wireless mouse is where it's at. So if there's like anything that you're able to get, wireless mouse for your laptop. <laughs> And a couple more things of technology, hard drive. Get a second hard drive. So this, or yeah, is this called, is it called a hard drive? A backup hard drive? An external hard drive, that's what it's called. So I have an external hard drive. Um, I asked for it for Christmas a couple years ago. It's by Seagate. I don't remember how many terabytes, two terabytes on here. I should actually be getting a lot more of these since I'm video editing and have them specifically for video editing and have one specific for work. Just, you need to be backing up your work so much more than you think. Get a hard drive. I've heard so many horror stories of, people's who, of people who their computers crash or whatever and they haven't backed them up in weeks or months. I honestly really need to back up my computer. I'll do that after this video. Um, or they've just like lost so much progress on their thesis because of not having a hard drive and not backing up their computer. So just get one of these, especially if you're in grad school, it'll make your life so much easier. I'll talk about something in the future, like things that'll make it easier just shortly after in this video. If you don't have one of these, they're kind of, I mean, they're like 80 bucks for like a two terabyte hard drive, maybe like a hundred. Um, which feels kind of expensive, but it will make your life a lot easier. And then you can also like put all of your photos and videos and stuff like that on here and not worry about losing all your precious memories if you don't pay for cloud space. I don't pay for cloud space. I use these. Maybe I should get with the 21st century. I don't know. I kind of hate all Apple products except for the iPhone. Like the iPhone itself is good, but I don't like, I don't like iCloud. I don't like their other things. Last bits of technology, headphones, Bluetooth headphones, corded headphones, whatever. These are Bluetooth earbuds by Bose. My mom got these for me when I graduated my undergrad. Um, they were my first pair of Bluetooth things. I like these for if I'm like going on a walk or something like that. Honestly, they're quite nice also when I'm working in the lab and I don't wanna have my stuff like blasted on the Bluetooth speaker. Like if I'm listening to podcasts, I don't feel the need to blast podcasts through the speaker. So these are quite nice. Um, 
also, like I said, for like working out and stuff like that. These aren't great for like phone calls and meetings and stuff like that. I think AirPods are probably better, but I've never had AirPods. These are the ones that I have. And then these, my mom got me for Christmas because my other ones crapped out on me. So these are wireless headphones by Sony. They're like the WXM something, something, somethings. They're noise canceling. I don't know. I have some issues with these. The My biggest issue with these, so as a comparison, my old other um, noise canceling over the ear headphones that I had are by Bose and those still live at my desk and then those are corded. So they just are plugged into my PC at my desk. Um, and those I like because I have a very small head. And for me with these ones, um, when I put them on, they kind of sit lower on my head than I'd like them to. I'd like them to be more up here, but they're already as tight as they can go. Like I can't tighten this up here anymore. And also they press against my head a lot firmer than the other headphones do. And so when I'm wearing my glasses like this or my blue light glasses, which spoiler alert, next thing that I think you should have, um, I can get headaches sometimes from them but the noise canceling function is quite nice and they do come with a cord so you can plug them into your computer and you don't have to use them bluetooth and that way you don't have to use the noise canceling section um function you don't have to use the noise canceling if you're doing bluetooth you just have to like go in on the app or like on one of these buttons i can't remember and turn them off um but one of the issues that i've been having with them a lot is that they'll just automatically they'll like disconnect from my bluetooth randomly after like five minutes and I don't know what it is. So I don't know if maybe I need to charge them. Maybe I let them die a little bit too much. I have no clue. So I have two pairs of wireless head or of noise canceling headphones, but my Bose noise, no, noise canceling headphones that I got for high school graduation, the noise canceling function on them went out within a year and I warrantied them and I was able to get a brand new pair for free because I was able to, I was still under the warranty. And then like a year and a half after that, the Bluetooth or the, sorry, the noise canceling function stopped working again. But at that point it was, after the year warranty so I couldn't replace them for free and so I've just had them and the the, the noise canceling function doesn't work but they still kind of cancel noise because they are over the ear headphones um and I will say I do really like over the ear headphones when I'm working because it really just like it's like a physical like blocking out the world they're on my head it's time to work kind of idea um and these ones I actually had to get these because of my Bose ones um, they, the like microphone on them just like totally crapped out and I couldn't really use them anymore for WebEx meetings. So that was the main reason for getting a new pair. And I just told my mom or told my parents for Christmas. I was like, I'd love a new pair of noise canceling over the ear headphones. And she bought these ones cause she was like, I figured you might like to try something different since your Bose ones did stop working so soon. That being said, my parents have used like the same pairs of Bose headphones for like over 10 years without any issues with the noise canceling. So I don't know what that's about but headphones for sure because you'll need them for webex meetings um, and then also it'll just make life easier for listening to music at your desk while you're working or podcasts while you're in the lab stuff like that i mean it's headphones i don't need to explain to you why you need them that is all the technology that i think you need there's just a couple more things like i said i think blue light glasses are a must and I seem to have misplaced them. Oh, here they are. So the glasses I'm currently wearing are my prescription glasses and they actually do have the blue light filter. You can probably see how blue the light is that's reflecting. They were put on my glasses accidentally. I did not actually request them, um, but since they did it accidentally, they gave it to me for free. <laughs> so I do have a blue light filter in my prescription glasses, but most days I do wear contacts. And so I have a bunch of pairs of blue light glasses that are not prescription. Um, and I have them scattered about. I have a couple in my desk at home. I have a couple at my desk at work. I have a pair that I keep in my backpack. My parents got me like five or six pairs for Christmas one year. I think they just like came in a big pack. And so I've just kind of scattered them about. And I do find that they make a really big difference. Um, on days when I'm not using my blue light glasses, I will be a lot more fatigued at the end of the day with my eyes and I like, probably will get headaches. Um, and you spend so much time staring at computers nowadays in school, especially in grad school, if you're like on a really heavy writing day, it'll just make a big difference and it'll make your brain feel a lot better. Um, sometimes, like I said, with the over the ear headphones, I will get kind of a headache because of the extra like 
pressure and the plastic pushing in. So when that kind of is happening to me, that's a lot of times where I'll switch to the wireless headphones or I will just take a break from the blue light glasses and just have the headphones on, but a pretty minor issue in my opinion. The last item, physical item that I think is absolutely necessary are physical planners. I'm a physical planning gal. I use physical planners. I don't use online calendar planning things. I, I just can't do it. I don't keep up with it enough. 2021 to 2022, I used uh, Cambridge by Mead. So the reason I like these ones is because it's a horizontal week. So you have a bunch of space for every single day. And then also you get a full month calendar to write in any important dates on the month. And so this one, like I said, is Mead by Cambridge, but the ones that I've been using historically for the last, like for my entire college career are Brit & Co, um, Blue Sky Planners, and they're laid out in the exact same way. So you still get the full month that you can write anything important, and then you still have horizontal week by week. And these are the ones that I really like. It's just my style. They're not super, like, they don't take up a whole lot of room. They're like the size of a book. And then they're spiral bound, they're really sturdy. Um, these are the ones that I like and use. I think physical planners are where it's at. I know a lot of people will use Google calendars or like their WebEx calendar or Outlook calendar, or um, I think people use Notion for planning online, but I'm just a physical planner gal. If you're a physical planner person, I recommend those ones. You can get them at like Target and Staples or something like that, I don't know. You'll find them everywhere. But that wraps up all of the physical things I think make life as a student and especially as a grad student like infinitely easier. Other tips for being a grad student slash student in general, um, going back to the hard drive thing, if, if you like online things, I mean, I do a lot of things online. I recommend learning how to use Microsoft Office online. I prefer it a lot more to Google products. Uh, it's It works in basically the same way as Google, like Google Slides, Google Docs, Google Sheets, except it's Microsoft. And I'm guessing that when you started learning how to use a computer, you're using Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Excel, and all of those things. And there's an online version. It, it's just like online Microsoft, it's great. But the nicest thing about it is you can open it with like in the desktop app. So if you have the desktop apps, which I can guarantee you if you're a student, you get free licensing through your school for the products because otherwise you do have to pay for them. But since you're a student watching this, I can guarantee you get them for free. Um, and you can use them online. So everything is backed up online and you're able to open it in your desktop app. It automatically saves for you, stuff like that. That being said, the only reason that I really use the Microsoft online is because that is the, um, like what we use for our email at school. So we get a lot of free out, or we get a lot of free OneDrive storage. So OneDrive is Microsoft version of Google Drive. So it's where all of your things are. Everything is automatically saved for you. You can send it to multiple people and you can all edit at the same time, the same way you can on Google. It made writing my capstone way easier with my group. It makes writing scientific papers way easier, especially if you have tracked changes on because it puts everything on in a different color font for whoever's working. I think it makes things a lot easier. It's something that I've had to kind of like bring to my lab mates and bring to my advisor and kind of be like, okay, you kind of you gotta, gotta get on it. This will make your lives a little bit easier. And then it also is nice because I'm not trying to keep track of things between a bunch of different computers because I have my PC at work and that's on a, the work server. And I could log into the work server from my computer, from my laptop, but I have chosen not to, to have some work-life separation. Um, so it makes it easier so that I don't have a different version saved on my laptop than I do on my desktop because it's all in the one drive. The only issue with that then is you do kind of have to have an internet connection to be working. You can like download a copy and like edit from just the desktop app without any Wi-Fi connection and then just upload it back onto the drive when you do have a Wi-Fi connection. But I'm a fan of the Microsoft Online suite. I don't like the Google suite at all. It makes no sense to me. Like I hate it so much whenever people want to use it because whenever we're using it for a group project, I end up just downloading everything as either a Microsoft Doc or a Microsoft PowerPoint and then editing before we actually submit in Microsoft. But you can use Google if you really want to, just 
something that you have maybe an online version that you don't have to work on backing up and stuff like that, good, good to use. Another tip, use a reference manager. Oh my lord, use a reference manager. If you don't know what I mean by that, I mean if you're writing scientific papers, you're reading scientific papers, and you have to cite something, like a work cited, a bibliography, you can read it online. There's gonna be a, like, a thing to click on whatever page you're on. It's in different places for every journal. That's like cite, export citation, download citation, whatever. And then it'll go automatically into whatever reference manager you use. I use EndNote because I get a free version of the software through my university. That's the like partnership contract that we have. But there's Zotero, Mendeley, um, RefWorks, I want to say is one of them. I don't know. But I use EndNote and I recommend using whichever one you get for free from your university um, because you'll probably get the pro version for free. A lot of them I think do have just like free, like standard free versions, but you won't get all of the same like benefits and um, like tools. But another thing to keep in note is to use whichever one that the people you will be maybe writing papers with use. So the nice thing about EndNote and all of these libraries, I'm assuming, is that like I was writing a paper with someone from the JPL and they would have to put in a bunch of citations and then I'd have to put in a bunch of citations. We were able to share the libraries. So whatever citations he was able to add in, he could just send me over the library and I could import it into my library so that it's like cohesive and it's working together and it's talking to each other and it's not like freaking out every time you open Word. But just use a reference manager. All it's it's amazing. It'll import the references for you within LaTeX or Word, whichever you use. I use Word. Everyone's telling me to learn LaTeX. I, I don't really want to, but maybe I should. And it's awesome because you can like choose from a list of drop a drop down list of like reference um, formats. So like MLA, APL, APA six, like Chicago all of these different things. And the other thing that's really nice about it is a lot of times when you're submitting to journals, they have a very specific citation reference uh, format for that journal. So for example, I submitted my first author publication to Frontiers Microbiology and Frontiers has a specific type of reference style. And you can go to the journal, download that reference style, put it into your reference manager. So like I downloaded it from Frontiers, I put it into EndNote. And then within my Word document, I was able to select that Frontiers Frontiers style for references, EndNote magically updates them all for you. And then if you are like moving moving chunks around within your paper and your citations get put in different orders, it'll automatically update the ordering if you're doing like numbered ordering, so like one through 50 rather than by article or by um, author last name alphabetically. Like it'll update that all for you if you realize, oh, I have to change the journal or I have to change the format. You just click the drop down, you hit update. It's amazing. Use a reference manager. It'll make your life so much easier when it comes to writing and especially when it comes to writing your thesis. As far as I have heard, use one. Just, just do it. Pick one. It doesn't really matter which one. I just recommend picking one and sticking with it. As an undergrad, my microbiology TA taught us about Mendeley and I used it for like a year and then I hated it. I don't remember exactly what I didn't like about Mendeley, but I didn't like it. And then I got EndNote and EndNote, I like EndNote. I'm a big fan of EndNote. And <laughs> there's online libraries with EndNote so you can use it online. You don't necessarily have to use it on your desktop and they talk to each other and you can sync them up and everything. And the good thing about EndNote too, and ones that have been around for a while is there's a lot more troubleshooting. So if you're like having an issue, you can Google it, you can troubleshoot it. Whereas whichever ones are like newer, if there's a new reference manager that just like came on to the scene, I'm not up to date on that. Um, you'll probably have a harder time finding help if something's going wrong. But anyway, use a reference manager. If you learn anything from this video, use a reference manager and get a wireless mouse. <laughs> So I think that's all I have to say today. Um, I also have a like what's in my backpack and what do I keep at my desk video. It's from like pretty early in my PhD, I think. So I might have to do an updated one here shortly, but I don't know that anything's really changed. So maybe I won't, but check that video out. And then all of my PhD grad school playlists, check all of those out. 
leave any go-to products or items or whatever down below that make your life so much easier as a student. And please stick around if you enjoyed it. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.